So with the latest chapter having Maki get completely owned by Sukuna in 1.5 chapters, Yuji and Choso nowhere to be found, and Ino probably just out of the fight since Sukuna kicked off his entire arm. We have Kusakabe left to challenge the King of Curses, and well, since nobody's going to say it, I will. I believe that Kusakabe has a chance. Okay, hear me out now, you didn't even let me finish. I believe that he has a chance of legitimately impressing Sukuna here. And let's be honest, nobody, and I mean nobody, is expecting Kusakabe to beat Sukuna. Okay, maybe you're that one guy or whatever, but 99% of us don't expect it. Anyways, in this video, I'll be going over why Kusakabe legitimately has a chance to surprise Sukuna, impress him and us as viewers, and do what he narratively is supposed to do stall the king of curses on some dark souls type beat and with that being said let's get into this yap session first let's start off with what we already know about kusakabe and believe it or not most scene of his are actually important and relevant as to why i think he's going to pop off in the next chapter first we'll revisit the shibuya incident this is where kusakabe actually confronts kenjaku when kenjaku was about to free us from the panel filler for good he launches a maximum uzumaki at the human garbage but then it's shown that Kusakabe was able to completely deflect this maximum technique with the usage of his shadow style. Kenjaku then says, it's nice to face someone with a little bit of know-how, and we know how stingy Kenjaku can be with such praise. At first, this was a scene that we kind of remarked as impressive and then just moved on from. I'd see it brought up here and there, but there was never really too much discussion on it. But obviously with the recent implications of the last two chapters, it could have been implied that Kusakabe's strength is truly much higher than we thought it was. This moment also has me thinking that Kusakabe will have a moment similar to Maki and where Sukuna questions himself, because Sukuna's dilemma against Maki was to find out whether sorcery or raw strength was the answer, and the Black Flash being exclusive to Jujutsu deciding the battle gave us the answer to that question. So now we'll move on to the next question using Kusakabe who has no curse technique, who has mastered pure fundamentals and foundational knowledge to a point where he surpassed all other sorcerers except for the outliers. Instead of reaching the epitome of sorcery by achieving every single feat that a sorcerer can imaginable, even to a barrierless domain like Sukuna has, Kusakabe represents the basics and fundamentals. In a way, he can potentially challenge Sukuna to ask himself what's more important, mastering the fundamentals of sorcery to a point where you're unparalleled, or taking sorcery as far as you possibly can. Y'all know that one quote from all the kung fu movies, right? I don't fear a man who can do 100 punches one time but I fear the man who could do one punch a hundred times. Something like that, man. Y'all tell me what it is down below. You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, every character who's faced Sukuna has had him ponder something or reveal something about himself. So I believe that this is the world that Kusakabe can have. Another thing we know about Kusakabe is how much he loves his family. So when we look at that flashback before Yaga's final moments, we know that Yaga brought back his nephew as a cursed corpse and allowed his sister to meet that cursed corpse and he expressed huge gratitude for it. And this was a stark contrast to the Kusakabe we know and love in every other scene as somebody who just mopes around, complains a lot, things of that nature. And I believe that this moment was to display the values he has as a person. Despite how stupid Kusakabe can act when it comes to his job, I do think that when push comes to shove, he will always step up to the plate to protect the people that he cares about. This could be due to a curse, probably from the unknown Usami that he mentioned earlier in the most recent chapter, but despite that, he does step up when he absolutely needs to, as he did in order to protect Higuruma and Miwa. I believe that with Sukuna outright declaring that he's going to release the merger and destroy the entire world, with the combination of him acknowledging and accepting that he's the last person left, we'll see a Kusakabe who's much more serious and powerful than usual. The stage has truly been set for the GOAT to lock in. I also want to add in the fact that 251 has Eno you know, suggest that Kusakabe can hang with the special grades if he really wanted to, and that of course 252 starts with some grade ones and Gojo suggesting that Kusakabe is the strongest grade one sorcerer, which is a surprise to everybody. The story has been kind of setting up Kusakabe as someone who is going to step up to the plate at some point because he can. I wouldn't really say that this is where the story started hyping up his strength though, since we're bound to get people saying this is an ass pull since I pointed out earlier, Bro was able to deflect an entire maximum from Kenjaku himself. That's enough in the narrative reasons. Now then, what exactly is Kusakabe going to do here? 
First, I think it goes without saying that Sukuna may or may not be trying. I'm unsure because if Kusakabe does push Sukuna to that same question he had about Maki, he'll likely end up using all the power he has again the same way he did earlier. Then again, I'd find it kind of strange for Sukuna to go all out against Kusakabe, but that could just be me ironically, not taking Kusakabe seriously despite making this video about him. I think either way, Kusakabe's serious strength and IQ will be enough to match whatever Sukuna is going to throw at him here. I also want to bring up the fact that there are some weapons that you could potentially use against Sukuna, and I even see bro dual wielding at this point. There's still Nanami's blade in play, and I don't think the stinky sorcerer can use it because he's lost an arm. Shout out to the people who stopped by my stream since they pointed that out, but Kusakabe already is said to be quite powerful without a cursed technique, and having that cursed tool will give him a cursed technique. Or even better, he can use Maki's blade and increase the potency of that due to his style and skill with a sword. However, take these guesses with a grain of salt, as I do think Kusakabe will need to be able to sheath these blades in order to use some of the new shadow style techniques with them. And people may say, oh whatever, I just use the blades anyways because they're better than the new shadow style. And to that I say as of now, I agree, but we still don't know the full extent of those techniques. I believe we've only seen one of them fully in action. And those techniques are probably why Kusakabe is as impressive to the other sorcerers as he is in the first place, combined with his knowledge of almost everything in the series. There's also the potential that he does get some help from the likes of Choso and Yuji, because there is no way they did not hear that black flash from Sukuna echo across the entire battlefield of Japan. I mean, that punch dead ass removed Maki from the battlefield, had my computer monitor shaking and everything. So, yeah. Those two should be nearby and entering the battle again at this point, and if so, they'll help him out while he shines and stuff. Yuji obviously has the ability to just eat a bunch of hits and weaken Sukuna slowly but surely, and if you really notice, Yuji has been fighting the whole time, getting up over and over throughout all of these chapters, even after that enhanced dismantle that Sukuna threw at him within Yuta's domain. I said this in my review, and you can call me crazy, but with the exception of Sukuna, I do believe that Yuji is the strongest sorcerer on the battlefield, and that Jujutsu High is taking advantage of Sukuna's disapproval and misjudgment of Yuji as a sorcerer in order to eventually catch him off guard with this fact. They'll send sorcerers up against Sukuna over and over, and once nobody can fight anymore, Yuji will take over from there and finish the job with his full strength. This happening would also in a good case of irony show Sukuna Yuji's true role as well. A lot of the things Sukuna has done to Yuji in this fight would have cleared anybody else that's not Hakari, so I'm quite suspicious of Yuji at this point. Not to mention, every fight is decided by someone making a big miscalculation or getting caught off guard, something like that, so Yuji being stronger than both we and Sukuna thought could be his fatal miscalculation. After all, Kenjaku was expecting big things from him, so I personally do think that Yuji could come back to help Kusakabe in this chapter. And with as weakened as Sukuna is, and it's looking like it's time for Yuji to turn up, I think he'll give Kusakabe a lot of help. Now we'll move on to if Kusakabe doesn't get help from anybody. Then yeah, he's probably going to do better than we think. But in typical Jujutsu Kaisen story beats, this is also going to be his last stand. But Kusakabe does seem like one of those characters who follows the trope of surviving everything that he should not be surviving. So we'll see. All I hope is that we get one huge moment out of this guy, probably two. And that he really pops off here because I see the potential of him being one of the story's better characters. There's just something so captivating about the fact that he has chosen to enter and remain on this battlefield, despite seeming to want no parts of it and having no obligation to. He represents a duty and selflessness beyond himself, and I hope the story sees these parts of his character through. No matter what happens though, I'm sure we'll get the fake critics calling everything and anything an asshole regardless. With that being said, Thank you guys for watching, have a great day, and peace out.